What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's Gucci? What's Gucci? What's Gucci? All my peoples out there. Back with some more Michael Jordan content. Randomly found this video by a YouTuber called Rolando Vilato. All right. The only Michael Jordan video you need to watch. Well, with all due respect, I'm sure their video you created is fantastic and great. But there's too much Michael Jordan out there for me to say there's only one I need to watch. I need to watch them all. I need to watch them over again. I don't care if y'all put the same stuff on different videos. You can never get enough of Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Do you feel me? Every time you watch these highlights that you've seen a million times before, it's so captivating that it still feels like you're watching it for the first time. You still can't believe what you're actually watching. Poetic. Skillful. A man. So driven. Special. Relentless. Loved the game. Cared about winning. The man. The myth, the legend, the GOAT, Michael Jordan. Check out our Michael Jordan playlist, and let's get into it. His ability to take over games, his ability to want to have that last shot. And demoralize you. Yes. And scare the living hell out yes. of you. When you think of Michael Jordan, he's just, just that competitive fire. And I believe that he, every night he stepped on the floor, he put on a cape. Michael Jordan for me was like, it looked like he was like Jesus, black Jesus walking towards me. <laughs> yeah. So when he walked in, it was like, I didn't know what to say. It was, it was overwhelming to meet, you know, to finally meet the guy that I've looked up to my whole life. Gets it to Jordan. Michael challenges and swears. Yeah, Mike dunked on me, but uh, he knew I was there. That's why he got all hype. He knew I was in there because a couple of games back, you know, we played him, and I was blocking his shot. Jordan, go to the left hand block, my boy. He remembered that. So with that dunk was big to him. Anytime he dunked on him, you know, so hey. Michael Jordan is the best player ever. Kobe Bryant, one of the best did players you, ever. In your last first year, did you play? Was Michael in the league your first year? He was going. He, no, he was coming back to the Wizards. I worked out with him. Actually, he, I do have a lot of stories. I worked out with him uh, for two years on his comeback. Yeah, when he came back to the Wizards, worked out every single day. Charles Barkley is a great, great player. But Michael Jordan is in a class by himself, clearly superior to anybody else in the league. <laughs> Have another drink, Bob. Um, I would never say another player is better than me. Never. And I'm not gonna say I'm better than him, but I would never say he's better than me. Because I can play basketball with any basketball player in this world, but I would never say another player is better than me because he would have an advantage on me going into the game. He made me want to be an NBA basketball player. And, you know, just to tell him, you know, thanks for everything he brought to the game and open the door up for the rest of the players. Without his vision, I promise you, there wouldn't be no Hall of Fame Allen Iverson standing at this podium if it wasn't for this guy. He gave me the vision, man. And, um, you know, you want to be fast like Isaiah, and you wanna shoot like Bird, you know, rebound like Barkley, pass like Magic, be dominant like Shaq. But man, I wanted to be like Mike. You know, we have a chance to play the world champions, and you know, the day will come where I step on the court with, in my eyes, the best basketball player that ever stepped on a basketball court. And uh, it was just an exciting moment for me. And it was something that I treasured for the rest of my life. Do you feel that Michael is the best ever? I think so. I think he's the, not only the best basketball player, but probably the greatest athlete that's ever played any sport. And I you know, I'm growing up and I'm watching, you know, this guy, Michael Jordan. I think all you guys know him, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm growing up watching this guy on TV every day. And uh, I'm like, wow, you know, he's an amazing basketball player. I, hopefully someday I get an opportunity to meet him. So... Um, I think it was my junior year in high school. I go up to Chicago and I go to a gym called Hoops where he, he plays basketball in the summertime. Uh, and I didn't know he was going to be there. Uh, but I seen him 
I seen him walking towards me, and it was kind of like he was walking on air. He, I, I was, I had to, I had to pinch myself. Was, was, is that My, Michael? Who? And it was, it's like he was like Black Jesus to me. Like, <laughs> I was like the best one, of the best friends. Now, I've had ever he? Had. Th- did he know of you? Well, yeah, I think he did. He, mm-hmm. you know, he he called me a young fella, of course, yeah. uh, you know, and just basically told me to keep working at it, and someday I can get to the NBA. I was a junior in high school, so. Uh, yeah. You know, I guess he told me something right, and I just kept working at it. I tell you, like, when, we, when I was in high school, um, and uh, I used to work out with the 76ers, I used to ask him, you know, what's it like to guard Mike? He go, Mike? You mean Black Jesus? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> black who? Oh, well, we call him Black Jesus. Or you can call him Black Cat. I'm like, I'm going to call him fucking Mike. That's his fucking name. So the level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. Wow. And I would tell him, I said, when I face him, we're going to go at it. He says, oh, you don't want to do that. I'm like, what? Man, you don't know me, man. You took Jordan? I'm never going against Jordan, dog. I've never seen it. I thought Michael Jordan was Jesus Christ, like, playing to be Michael <laughs> Jordan. I swear to God, dog. <laughs> Listen, man. Mike- the first time I played against him, and... um. I, w- I walked out on the court, and I, I looked at him, and for the first time in my life, a human being didn't look real to me. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, I used to watch him and sit on my mom's dresser, and she used to tell me, boy, if you don't get back from that TV before you go blind, you better. Like, I wanted to be that close to him just watching him. I'm in his basement, and he have all the old... Yeah, so uh, I'm going to I'm going to pause and then make my comments because I'm going to forget things if I wait to the video ends. Um, so it's amazing how many people when they talk about what it's like to see Michael Jordan, they so many people say he's unreal. He takes the air out of the room. You don't believe what you're watching. He's so mythical. You know what I mean? It's otherworldly, worldly, excuse me. Um, and so many people say it's like if, if Jesus came to you, like he, that's the type of feeling, uh, <laughs> what it's like to be in Michael Jordan's presence. Like, seriously, I have so many people have said that so many people and, and, uh, people have also said that about Kobe Bryant, when Kobe Bryant would step into a room, he'd get that kind of attention at times. Uh, I had a, one of my cousins. Um, he had a really, uh, interesting job. He, he worked at the, uh, the white house and, uh, he got a chance to meet Kobe. He wasn't a Kobe fan like I am. So after he did it, he's like, you won't believe who's, whose hand I shook today. I was like, what's up? Totally not expecting it. He's like, Kobe. I was like, you shook Kobe's hand. He's like, yeah. He's like, I was just sitting at my desk doing office and he strolls by, he, Walks into my office, looks around, and kind of like nods his head. And I got up and said, nice to meet you, Mr. Bryant. Shook his hand. I was like, I'm so jealous, but I'm so happy for you. At least I could say somebody in his family got to get that up close and personal with being Bryant. Um, but yeah, Mike, uh, Mike had that presence, bro. And then, I mean, we're talking about other all-time great NBA players other legends saying that about him. You know what I mean? This isn't some fan. You know, this is other NBA legends saying that's the feeling Michael Jordan gave them. You don't really hear that. Like I said, I, the only other person I've ever heard people say that about is Kobe. But any other NBA player I haven't, you know, people ain't really, re- and I think part of it um, has to do with both of these guys are kind of to themselves, so they're not really in the public spotlight as much, you know. So when you see him, it's like, <gasps> you know what I mean? So, yeah, but I'm not saying that's that's part of it, but their mentality, their legacy, their aura, all that stuff has has to do with it. But yeah. Old footage on VHS. I'm watching the game. It's like three in the morning. He came out there like, oh, come on, we're going upstairs to the gym. He broke down how to score the basketball. That year, I was averaging like almost 30. He also said that 
you want to play against Michael Jordan before he retires. He's only got probably three or four more years left, so. I know he's an old guy. <laughs> he's an old guy. But no, nah, you know, that would be something that I love to do because, uh, you know, I watched him growing up. Uh, I love to play against Magic Johnson, but now he's retired. And Michael Jordan is somebody that I've always looked up to, and I want to play against him. He's undoubtedly the greatest player in the game. I'm going to miss him. And I can tell all my ten children from nine different women that I played against <laughs> the great Michael Jordan. Are you still close with Michael Jordan, or were you ever close with Michael Jordan? Uh, Michael Jordan and I are friends, and I call him all the time because I like his brand Jordan sneakers and his clothes. <laughs> and he sends them and, to and you? For free. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stockton, inside of Carmelo, they double it. Jordan knocks it away from him. Jordan's got it. Favorite, I, I, I don't remember seeing many favorite things in person. I don't have a favorite <laughs> Jordan moment, but I have a, a Jordan moment that I'm like very, very tired of uh, people coming up to me and giving me a hard time about. Before the game, I was terrified, but to relieve pressure of that, I ain't got to go from my work. Second thing I said, I can't let him dunk on me. That's not going to happen. So it was a play when he comes baseline. Jordan turns and faces. Shot clock at seven, six, and a Whoa! 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 Shaquille. That never really up. I had to touch him up. Because one, I'm not getting dunked on. Because I'll never live that down from family members, homeboys, Barber shops, that'll be a poster forever because Mike was the man at the time. But Mike also taught me something very valuable. So when I go to help him up, he said, don't ever help nobody up. Great file. Don't do that. I don't need your help. But I'm coming back. Don't you worry. First time he entered the league, that was my favorite moment. Just the impact that he had on the league, just coming into the league. I, I enjoy guarding Mike because he was, you know, the one thing I did with Mike is I never got him pissed off. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> he make a shot, you say, good shot, Mike. You know, you don't talk trash to him no, so no. he can go off for 60. You know, you, can, you try to kill him with kindness. Yeah. You don't try to talk trash. <laughs> Byron Scott didn't want the smoke at all. He said the hell with it. <laughs> I'm about to poke the bear. <laughs> so I told Anthony Peeler, listen, um, MJ, uh, he's, he's probably going to go for about 50 tonight on you. So just <laughs> don't don't piss him off. You know, just be cool. He, en he ended up with 54. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the man could do basically whatever he wanted to do on that basketball court. Funny, I, I tell you this story right quick because you would really enjoy this. So we're in the uh, restaurant and Larry and I sitting there talking. So enters Michael Jordan. So he sits down, and Larry and I are going back telling stories with each other and just having fun. So Michael says, I just want to tell you guys, I, I, I really, in college, you guys were the two guys I looked up to, so on and on and on. And even in the NBA, you guys have been dominating. But he said, I, I'm just here to tell both of you. There's a new sheriff in town, and that's me. <laughs> he announced it? He announced it to both of us. We both looked at each other and said, you know what? It is your turn. So go ahead, young man. Go ahead. To this day, it's still, like, it's still super surreal for me. Mm. Like, every time I see him, I'm like, wow. Like, <laughs> like, and I've been around him for, for eight years now. I've been around him for and. Every time, it's just, I can't even believe it. Like, he's just there, and he's so regular. He acts just like... Talks so much trash. He talks so much so trash. So much oh trash. He was this. Second to none. <laughs> Second to none, man. But he, he's the best. He's the best. He loves being around us. He loves to, to help us, give us advice. Um, not just me, everyone, so... What's the best advice he's given you? Um... <clears throat> It's this kind of cigar. Re-sign re in Charlotte. No. <laughs> 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 no, really just to, just to be myself. Okay. Um... You know, which I, I, I've needed that a few times over the course of my career. Um, so, yeah, you know, especially early on in my career, you know, when I first came in, you know, trying not to, you know, step on anybody's toes, you know, work my way in and things like that. He kind of pulled me to the side and he's like, I drafted you for a reason. You know, that's just, cool. you know, come in and, you know, just be yourself. And that's how I try to be. My rookie year, uh -huh. we were playing the Chicago Bulls, and this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. Okay. And we were playing an ex exhibition game in some obscure place. And most veterans do not like to play in exhibition games. They want to get to the real thing. I'm a wide-eyed, energetic rookie, and we're playing this exhibition game, and Michael's going through the motion. And Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, can you believe Michael Jordan 
the guy everyone's talking about who's supposed to be able to walk on water, you're out here killing him, Reg. This is in the first half. He's like, you should be talking to him. He's like, you know, you're right. Michael, who do you think you are? <laughs> the great Michael Jordan? That's right, there's a new kid on town, right? Kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, I have 10 and he has four points, right? And I'm doing all this talking. He's like, okay. End of the, end of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44. <laughs> And I ended up with 12. <laughs> so he outscored me 40 to 2. And as he's walking off, he's like, be sure and be careful. You never talk to black Jesus like that. Okay? <laughs> so we played in college, and so I used to, like, sometimes before the game, before the night before, we, you know, go eat or go to his hotel room, and he, and he was really mad at Reggie Theus. Because when he got traded, when, when Reggie got traded, Michael was the draft pick coming in. And Reggie was like, there's no guy who can replace me that's a rookie. So he said, just tell Reggie that I'm going to get 45 tonight. So I went to the locker room. I said, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> Michael said he's going to get 45. So he ended up with 43. And so he comes into the locker room. He said, I didn't get 45, but you got to come to Chicago. <laughs> Like now, that's that's supreme confidence. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's supreme points. You are. He was mad that he didn't get 45. I pretty much was watching him instead of just playing against him. You know, I was like, I can't believe I'm on the same court, Michael Jordan. You know, all that stuff. Um, Star very. Looking at the shoes and just looking at him and the ball head and the 23. And Look, I have too many memorable moments about Michael Jordan. None Steph of them are really very. <laughs> I really didn't want to believe a man could actually fly, and he gave everyone. That belief that for a little bit, maybe they could. Whenever I see somebody play Mark, Mike uh, or guard Mike, I used to always want Mike to take him to the hole and dunk on him. I didn't know if I was going to make the league. I was on a non-guaranteed contract. And I'll never forget one of my first exhibition games, we played the Bulls. And I was just trying to make the roster. And Michael Jordan <clears throat> gets the ball right in front of our bench. And I'm already scared to death. Like, God, I hope I don't get into this game. I'm, I'm not ready for this stuff. And he holds the ball out. He holds the ball out, and he looks right at me. And I'm on the bench, just kind of like, he holds the ball, and he goes, watch this. And he turns, and he went right around Dan Marley, bam, dunks it, looks back at our bench, and just starts laughing. And I'm looking like, there's no way in hell I can ever make this. <laughs> now I really don't want it. I thought, I thought he knew wow. that. For me, Michael Jordan was, it was a killer. It didn't matter. He wanted to come in and kill you. you know, Terry Stackhouse. I remember my first game playing him in the Spectrum in Philadelphia. He dropped 48 and three quarters and went and sit down and, and watched and, the rest and, of the game. For the, for the record. <laughs> there, there, there. He was playing against the New York Knicks in the play. Just in case y'all don't know, Jerry, Hack, Jerry Hackhouse, Jerry Stackhouse and Mike did play together in Washington. Also, I think he must have uh, drove baseline. He faked one way against Charles Oakley, and he spent back the other way, and he drove to the lane and went up for a dunk, and he dunked right over Patrick Ewing, and he stared at him. I think that was one of my most memorable Michael Jordan moments. Jordan trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a move by Jordan! It counts! And the foul! for the first time at the United Center, and I got thrown into the fire. He made a nice baseline spin move on me. I knew it was coming. He was just so strong. By the time I tried to body him off of me, he just swatted me away like a fly. I learned a lot this game, a lot about how technically sound Michael was. Because it's one thing in watching him play, and then it's another thing in playing against him. His technique was flawless. I wanted to make sure my technique was just as flawless. I think we all should be lucky we're even alive to see this guy play. Like some kids now who are buying the shoes have never seen Michael Jordan play in person. Or they've seen some clips and things like that, but he had no flaws whatsoever. You couldn't say he couldn't dribble, he couldn't no. shoot, he, he couldn't didn't defend. Have, he didn't have great range. He wasn't a three-ball shooter. But that goes back, he didn't have to be. Yeah. You know, his mid-range was so, so unbelievable. And getting... I cannot stand Colin Cowherd. You know what? At one point, Colin Cowherd used to be a pretty decent you know, sports talk show analyst or whatever. Then as he got more, he got, at some point, he became affiliated with Clutch Sports and the Legenda. And then he became obnoxious with his takes. But at one point, he was not always like that. But this, this, I'm tired of hearing this Michael Jordan couldn't shoot threes nonsense, man.
And I, I'm not going to get into it on this video because I've, I've spoken about it plenty of times, man. When the guy actually went out there putting up the three ball, pretty sure he did average uh, at least 40% or more, 40 plus percent, whatever, from three point land one of those seasons. Matter of fact, I'm going to go look it up. So in the 1994-1995 season, though that was only 17 games in his return, he shot 50% from three-point land. The season after that, 95-96 season, Michael Jordan shot 42% from three-point land. And the season after that, he shot 37% from three-point land. Come on, man. This notion that he didn't, he wasn't a good three-point shooter, especially in an era where they weren't chucking up threes like they are today is nuts. And even when you go into the playoffs, into the playoffs in 1987, he shot 40% from three-point land, though that's only three games. In the 91 playoffs, 92 playoffs, and the 93 playoffs, he shot over 38% from three-point land. 95, like I said, the return in the playoffs, 36. And in 1996, over 40% from three-point line. Get the hell out of here, man. Let's go. To the rim, he could finish with either hand. He was he was so flashy, but he was also so fundamentally sound. You know, so he had everything covered. Was he mean to you? No, he wasn't. He actually killed me slowly. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he would comment to the coach, he's actually doing a great job out here. And meanwhile, he's born at 45. <laughs> Wait, he's talking uh, to your coaches? Yeah, I remember uh, Chris Ford, he's he's yelling at me. Chris Ford's yelling the whole time. He's like, rookie, get in front of him, get in front of him. And I'm fronting him on the post, and MJ just kind of slowly kind of glides across the floor, and he gets the ball and shakes and scores. And I did everything the game plan said, and then there's a breaking action. We're sitting there, and, you know, Chris Ford is just down there just, hammering me and MJ was like he, he's doing a great job coach. he's actually doing a great job meanwhile he's got 45 on the books so I was like yeah yeah I mean listen I know that basketball is a team game right and you've already made Michael number one mm -hmm. but if you had to have Will against Michael my prime and his prime how much money would you be willing to bet <laughs> wow I love Will I love you Will think you could beat Michael in your prime he would take you outside he shoots from the three point arc then you try to come on and get him, he'd, ride, he'd dribble around you. I run the 109.5, I have a 52 vertical bench press, almost 600 pounds. Michael would probably be going to the Wait a minute, basket. 600 pounds? 600 pounds. I 600, think you're exaggerating, you're out of your mind. We all exaggerate a little bit, but in this case, I'm going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Guarding this guy. Will Serve is hilarious. A better defensive player. Every guy out there think they know how to play defense, but when you go against a guy like that, who can chew you up at any time of the game, you don't want to play defense. His offensive skills were just unbelievable. You, know, you find yourself watching him instead of guarding him a lot of times. Oh, yeah! Showtime for the bullies! I remember the energy in that building when they walked into there. The first shot I took, like a 15 foot, I think I shot it like eight feet. I wanted to be like him. I wore the same number as him. I wanted to wear my uniform like him. When you think of Michael Jordan, it's just, just that competitive fire. He held everybody on the team to a championship standard. And this type of leader you look at and admire and want to be like Being compared to Michael is a great honor. But at the same time, I have to separate that for the simple fact that he's accomplished what he's accomplished through hard work. I understand that. Uh, Michael's a great basketball player. But I'm Kobe Bryant. Getting schooled for a baseline dunk the first time I matched up with him. That was, <laughs> that was like the coolest thing. It was because I'd seen that spin move so many times and then I knew he was going to do it. Um, but the timing on TV and then in person are two completely different things. So he just spun right before I thought he was going to spin. And I was like, damn, that was pretty cool. When I came to the league and matching up against him, um, what I found is I found that he was extremely open. Um, to having a relationship, a mentor relationship, and giving me a great amount of advice and um, an, an amazing amount of detail, um, strategies, um, workout regimens, and things like that. So, um, and seriously, I mean, I don't think people really understand the amount of impact that he's had on me as a as a player and uh, and as a leader. My son is three years old, and 
If you ask him who wears number 23, he'll say Michael Jordan. I chose the number 23. One of the reasons was because of Michael Jordan. He was the blueprint for how to make a lot of Beckham. money as a personality and as a personal brand. The other day, we were going through a walkthrough, and there was 15 guys in the room, and 13 of those 15 guys had on Jordan. First of all, you know, I wear the number because of Mike. Uh, I think I fell in love with the game because of Mike, just seeing what he was able to accomplish. That's my inspiration in basketball, you know, to, to see what he did on the court and to see what he did off the court. You know, I didn't think it was no other number to wear besides 23. But I felt like Mike was so, you know, when you're growing up and you're seeing Michael Jordan, you, you, it's almost like a god. So I didn't never believe I could be Mike. So I started to focus myself on other players and, and other people around my neighborhood um, because I never thought that you could get to a point where Mike was. Um, so I think that helped shape my game. Well, you might have thought that at one point, but we all know now you are the self -pro the self proclaimed goat by your standards, Mr. James. <laughs> uh. So like, so for me, like growing up in Chicago. I was a, obviously I was a big Michael Jordan fan, so like some and Q Rich know this, but some of like the craziest things is like you grow up and you have this idea of like, yeah, one day who you want to become and this dream of who you want to become, but you really don't know if you can reach it, you know, until you reach it. But like growing up in Chicago and watching Michael Jordan and you know trying to emulate everything he did, and then have a point where you have a relationship with him when y'all texting. Y'all you know, talking and like you know what I'm saying like y'all seeing each other. It's like this is out of body experience. This is weird. This is crazy. So like you know what I mean like we've had obviously me and you. We both had some of those experiences. So you know we're real people. <laughs> you know what I mean like. You know what Michael wasn't saying much. Look at Gabrielle Union laying in bed. Look at look at her facial expression. She is so in love with her husband. I'm guessing they were married at the time of him making that video, but did you see the glow in her eyes, that smile? She was like, I love this, man. He probably just probably just put it down on her. He just had this this look like he was he was living in his own world. And then, you know, he he, he wasn't even being aggressive offensively as the Michael that I have known or right. come to know. But uh throughout that that game you could just see he started to feel it a little, little bit and as always once he started to feel it we just flooded him with with the basketball but you know he was um he was he was very quiet um didn't say much when he went to the bench he was just counting his own world and for guys that who never played with michael i've mm -hmm. played with him so right. i've seen these moments where he kind of shunned everybody out right. and that was one of those moments where he was just he was just trying to gather himself and just, uh, you know, stay in the game. Um, we thought at any moment he may go to the locker room or puke up on the floor. But, right. uh, <laughs> if you're picking and, and you're, you're the coach or you're playing and you need the running mate and you could have LeBron or Michael, who you picking? That's a dumb <laughs> question. <you're laughs> I'm going to take LeBron or Michael. I've, I've never done anything with LeBron, so... <laughs> I wouldn't take LeBron to the movies with me. Good, okay. I wanted to, I just That's wanted to. I thought Jesus never will retire, you know. <laughs> I know Jesus. Yeah, Scottie Pippen. You have now turned into one of the biggest Michael Jordan haters because you got, you got your feelings hurt about some facts that Michael Jordan put out in a documentary. Though, he constantly has held you in high regard and has constantly and consistently um, spoken about how he doesn't have those championships without Scottie Pippen and how important you were to his success and to the success of the Chicago Bulls. But that's not enough for you, Scottie. Jesus worked seven days a week or six days. He rest on Sunday, didn't he? Well, Michael Jordan played on you know Sunday. What? One time, and it's not even talking, one time we played the Bulls and we get off and we're in the playoffs and uh, we're in Washington. We get off the bus before the game. And uh, Jawan and Jordan are cool. Jawan, I mean, Jordan parks inside his Ferrari. We're getting off the bus, and he's smoking a cigar. Before and the game? Before the game. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, who's going to check me? Everybody, and we let him down, but we all pointed at Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Calvin Chaney. And now I think about it, he didn't say nothing. He was just, you know, he planned it. But <laughs> Sometimes you walk by the bench and go like, you know, to all the guys, you want to win? You want to win this game? And he would say to me, Get so and so out. He don't want to play tonight. 
He was hard on all of us, and he rode us and lifted the level of intensity and competitiveness of practice every day. He was such a fierce competitor to where he would get into it with his teammates in practice. One time, he actually punched Steve Kerr. And Kerr laughs about it now, but you got to figure that in the, in the moment, that that's not something that you, that you take lightly. That particular day, it got a little ugly. There's a lot of trash talking, and I remember just feeling disrespected. And so I sort of went back at him. The whole thing ended pretty quickly, but it was an important moment because his theory was if you couldn't handle the pressure that he could put on you in practice, there's no way you'd handle the stress of the finals. Big shot, the guy falling down, not being able to get to him. 17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead. You don't seem like a trash-talking kind I, of guy I'm to not. me. I'm not, and I never talk trash but one time in my entire life. With Jordan? With Jordan. Oh, all my right. First ever time ever talking trash. So we're with the Dream Team. OK. And uh, for three days in a row, we had came into a tie because what Coach Daly did, he split the team up east versus west. So Barkley, Jordan, Larry Bird, Pippen, uh, and Patrick Ewing all played in the East. Wow. And then we had the West guys, myself, David Robinson, Malone, uh, Mullen, uh, Drexler, Stockton. and so, and John Stockton. So we would play every day, tie. So this is the fourth day. And we got out on him about 12 to two. And I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really rattle his chain. So I went over there, tapped him on the shoulder, and said, hey man, if you don't turn into Air Jordan, we gonna blow you out today. Jimmy, his eyes got big. <laughs> Usually that tongue come about right here, now it's way out. <laughs> he broke the huddle, he hit a three, and he's looking at me. <laughs> so he came down again, hit another three. <laughs> so the greatest shot, now I've been involved in all three of them. First, Dr. J walked out in air, out of bounds. Oh, yeah, right. Reverse right. layup, and under, up yeah. under. Right. Michael Jordan in 1991 came down on us with the right hand, tongue out. <laughs> he switched in midair to the left, <laughs> spun it against the glass. Now, this is the greatest shot I've seen. He came down the right side, took off. David Robinson took off. And he said, OK, I'm going to just sit here in the air. Because <laughs> I know David Robinson is going to go down. <laughs> so David Robinson went to the ground. He 360, tongue moving, <laughs> and dunked it. In a practice game. In a practice game. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I was just stunned. And all of us were stunned to see him hang in the air that long and 360. I've heard Magic say this before in another video. Uh, I wish there was recordings of these practices from Team USA. I would love to sit down and just watch these guys go at it. Michael Jordan is so... And see this move Magic talking about. Incredible. Well, There'll never should, be... The moral incredible. is you should not talk trash to Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You say 360, you mean like it was like full, like this, all the way? <laughs> I think Jordan is the, the greatest of all time in my book. You know? What makes him... That's saying a lot, because Jordan wasn't a 360 kind of guy uh, in games. Um, he actually made a comment about why he doesn't do 360s. Um, I actually forgot what he said. But I think it had something to do that... Uh, you know what? I'm not going to... I'm not going to try... Let's focus on... Anyway, when, when I find out, when I go back and see what he said about doing 360s, I'll let you know. But... Uh, there a video I had reacted to a while ago. So some rare, it's like a rare Michael Jordan dunk contest from some type of charity event or something. I don't know, but he did a 360 in that video. It's it's video footage from an old camera, like in the 90s from from the bleachers. Better as a basketball player, not the rings argument. What makes him better as a basketball player? Like Scotty just described, what what makes him better to you? For me, I, I think just completely just taking over games, you know, when it, when it really counts. Um, not deferring to anybody at any given time. Yeah, there's times where he passed off to a John Paxson or, you know, a Steve Kerr. Yeah, but when it's time to, to get a bucket, 
I mean, um, MJ was that dude to take over a game. Averaging 40 in the finals one year, winning that championship. I mean, defending the best players. Exactly. I, I, I can't. He, he's just. Scotty's sitting there like, bro, I was really defending the best players most of the time. <laughs> he ain't going to say it on air. Greatest to me, man. Just, what are your like, recollections of that day? What is it like? playing in a game seven it's awesome that's the ultimate stage literally especially when you're going against michael jordan scotty pippen dennis rodman tony kukoc the bulls won six championships they never went to game seven except against us and what i remember the most beyond the intensity because i was playing with some tremendous veterans as well our mark jackson Reggie Miller, one of the top clutch players in Rick NBA Smith. history. Chris Mullen, one of the best strokes in NBA history. Going against that team, I just remember us being up 18 points in the first half, feeling like we might actually beat the Bulls. Then all of a sudden, it was like a video game. We couldn't get the ball past half court. I'm dead serious. It was like a college team playing against a freshman team. Couldn't get the ball up. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, two of the best defenders of all time. It seemed like they stole the ball and Ron Harper from us literally every time down, got the lead back. Rodman had 20 plus rebounds. Kukos was hitting threes off the bench. They were the Chicago Bulls. They went on to win the championship. He was 40 years old. I remember that game. I was in North Carolina, um, 98 Eastern Conference Finals just uh, wrapped up fifth grade if I'm not mistaken and uh, I had the jitters man the whole the whole game watching at my aunt's house she just recently passed away rest in peace T. Vicky um, but yeah uh, bro, I, I was nervous man at that Pacers team I was nervous but they got it done he was coming back with the Wizards. It was early in the morning, and I get a call from Tim Grover saying, MJ said you can meet him. So I go down there. I get there at about 7, 7 in the morning. He's been there already for an hour. It was, he was 40 years old. Like, he's been working out for an hour. So he's working out at 6 in the morning at 40 years old. He's coming back. So I think just his work ethic, it's no secret or surprise of how great he was, obviously, but his talent level, he was so driven. He was so competitive. To see him lose a game in the, in the, in the summer session, he would go sit in the corner by himself. Like, he was just unbelievably competitive. Chris Mullen tells a great story about the Dream Team. Everybody getting out of the way. You and Michael going at it in a practice. <laughs> very loud through curses. Put us there, Magic. Put us there. I always challenge Michael every day. And sometimes I would win, and most time he would win. You know, we would play uh, a lot of shooting games, a lot of free throw games, a lot of three-point shooting contest. I mean, we were, we're, we're two competitive people. And so I wanted to push him and he wanted to push me. Mike, come on, man. <laughs> Before we, you haven't got me yet. Huh? Mike, you can't it, don't even try it. You want me to go call Scotty? You have to call Scotty. Ball boy. Love this. What you call Scotty for? I haven't got you recently. Yeah, I agree with no, that. No, you haven't got me in the six years. One, two, three, just go ahead and say it. You can't No. Never. He said, I'll get you one day. You no. one day. <laughs> he never dunked on you. He never Face put you on the highlight. No. No. He said, I would love to hear you my post, but it's not happening. It's not going to happen. You know he's lying. It's never going to happen. Oh, man. When? All right, we're going to cast your green. Ball boy, who gets Scotty? Puts it off the glass. Nope, Luke kicked it out. Michael will get a hold for the fresh apple. MJ. Oh. Shakes the finger, but he finally got his dunk on Mount Matumbo. I oh, come on, Mike. You never dunked on me, Mike. No, no. Stop capping, Mike. You know I got the paint locked down, Mike. You ain't coming in the paint. If you know I'm there, I'm waiting. You're not coming in the way, Mike. It's Mount Matumbo, Mike. No. Mike, you trip it. Don't call me. Mike, you dunked on me? No, never dunked on me, Mike. Knew 
The announcers knew, everyone in the building knew, the team the Bulls were playing knew that at that moment, Michael was going to get the ball. And guess what? Michael got the ball. I could set the bar at seven and a half feet and tell him nobody's ever jumped that before, and they say, I can do it. Every night he stepped on the floor, he put on the cape. He can save anyone from anything. You know, Michael is competitive in all things, things that don't make sense. Right? Ping pong. Yeah, it's just, yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? So, like, he would try to get me to play golf all the time. Mike, I know about you. I've written books report about you in, like, elementary school. Like, I know you started playing golf when you were in Carolina. So that means if I'm doing the math, you've been playing golf for, like, a hundred fucking years. <laughs> um, I have not picked up a golf club. Ever. Ever. The last thing you're going to do is get me on a golf course and annihilate me. Not going to do it. Uh, you know, I love Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, the way that he approached the game, the way that he led his troops when he went out on the court, uh, and his never-say-die attitude, man, was, uh, was something I always looked up to. Best three players of yeah. all time. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, wow. Michael Jordan. Wow, this is tough. Michael Jordan. I came to Cameron Indoor Stadium to play against Duke. During the game, Michael hit his head on the backboard. They had to stop the game. And so I think they were asking LeBron there. Don't quote me on this. I think they're asking him top, I don't know, all-time starting lineup or top three, top five, something like that. But you notice the one person he can say without even thinking about it is Michael Jordan. And when we broke the huddle, we kind of looked at each other going, do we have to go back out there? That guy just hit his head on the backboard. <laughs> he took it easy on me. He did. He only had 36 points, and they won by six in overtime. But you didn't take it easy on him. Do you remember what you did? Uh, I fouled out. No. 25, 15, 11, and six steals. Oh, wow. Uh, none of those steals were against when I was guarding him. <laughs> uh they must, we must have been playing on a lower basket for me to score that many points. I, was, I remember because I had went to dinner the night before with Michael, and, uh, and I was just hoping when I left dinner that, um, that I didn't upset him. Um, I think he picked up the check, which might have upset him since I was a rookie. Um, but it was just a, you know, playing against the best, you know, um, and I got lucky if those were my stats. Um, but but we lost, so those it, you know it's about winning, and that's what. Jason Kidd to me is super underrated point guard. Jason Kidd, though I don't think he's the best point guard of all time. Jason Kidd is my favorite point guard of all time. I love me some Jason Kidd. He does best. You know, Michael Jordan for me was always, you know, the person that inspired me the most, and um, you know how he carried himself, how he handled things, and um, how he. Uh, carried the athlete, um, the black athlete, not just in the United States of America, but became a global phenomenon and saying, okay, a black athlete can reach the masses and inspire the masses on a global scale. My favorite basketball clip in the world, finals, game six. Michael Jordan sitting on the bench, tired as hell. Shaq, they're going to get mad at you. You said world finals, not NBA finals, sir. Be careful what you say, Shaq Diesel. Hey, look at Steve Kerr and says, they double me all the time. I'm going to kick it to you. He comes up. I'll be ready. And guess what? It is Michael Jordan time. Scotty Pippen looking for Michael Jordan. Checks the clock. Five on the 22. Here's Jordan. Did not have the shot. Shoots now the jump shots. He's won. He's going to win five world championships. And you had players on your team that you. I have a friend of mine. I have a friend. I have a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine who I talk to about once a week. You know what he says about Michael's four championships? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say anything about it because, Why? because because he has eleven. 
Bill yeah, Russell. Bill Russell. But this is amazing. And you don't wait a minute. And you don't say he's the greatest because he has 11 championships. Casey Jones has 10. I don't think, uh, you know, you can predicate how great a guy really is or because he has championships. There's a lot of guys on those championship teams who've done nothing. Michael right. happens to be, you know, if you want to say Michael's the greatest, I think he, he deserves all the accolades that you really want. I think the man has done more for basketball than any one individual. Even you. A, 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 any one individual. And I'm also saying, too, for those players out there today. That says a lot coming from Wilt Chamberlain, one of the greatest to ever play the game, one of the most dominant players to ever play the game. One of the most controversial players to ever play. That says a lot. And we all know how pompous Will Chamberlain is. But he has so much respect for other players at the same time. And a lot of the things he says, he kind of says it, you know, joking, jokingly or in good banter. Uh, you know, all in good fun. And though there's some, you know, there's always some truth to these kind of things. But... I've heard him say on other occasions what he feels about Mike and um, how he feels about Michael and what Michael Jordan means to him and to the game of basketball. So this is a lot coming from Wilt Chamberlain, bro. A lot, bro. I'm telling you. Who maybe don't quite respect Michael as they should. Almost all of them should be giving about 10% of their salaries to Michael because they, you know, that's that's who they owe it to. You understand? And 10 more percent. Yeah. Rep eight, Mike is four for 16 from the field. He's having a really rough night. Right. So Derek decides because there's about 10 minutes to go in the game. Uh, be the only high school uh, player there, and uh, it was mainly a uh, freshman in college, and so. Uh, you know, he came on the court and he guarded me. So instantly, I was like, "Man, he must think I'm the, you know, not not the strong link over here." And so uh, I got it going a little little bit. And obviously, uh, it's any any ball player's dream to play against Mike. And uh, I couldn't tell you how many times I did his move uh, after the finals the next day in the rec center and stuff. So I got a few buckets in the and I think the uh, the campers knew I was the only high school kid, and so uh, they got rowdy a little bit. And uh, we got a little bit of John. And so, uh, you know, we played two games. I think we, uh, we split one-on-one. -on -one. It was team game. And then uh, he said, okay, now let me handle my business. And he looked me in my face and said, I'm like, what you mean? So he said, I need all the campers, everybody to leave. Let's clear the gym. I said, oh, man, you know, so uh, we uh, continue playing. I'm pretty sure that's O.J. Mayo. Y'all remember O.J. Mayo? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's O.J. Mayo. I pick up and... Uh, you know, uh, Mike was Mike. <laughs> you know, he was jawing a little bit and uh, really getting into me defensively. And, uh, uh, you know, he's backing me down, you know, said, better scream for mama. You know, he's mama, mama, you know, hit the, hit the famous fadeaway on me. And then, uh, you know, I, was, I said, okay, okay, you got it going. And then he said, hey, young fella, let me tell you something. He said, uh, you know, you may be the best high school player in the world, you know, but I'm the greatest ever. And uh, don't you ever disrespect, you know, the great like that. I think, Jason, at the end of the day, for, for, for my... Yeah, that, that was O.J. Mayo, because I remember that story about him playing one-on-one -on -one against Michael Jordan in practice. I remember that. Name to come up in a discussion with the greatest basketball player of all time. Uh, it's like, it was like, wow. Like I said, I've... I did I did pretty much everything that MJ did when I was a kid. I shot fadeaways before I should have. I, I wore a leg sleeve on my leg and folded it. I mean, you're still not very good at shooting fadeaways, but okay. Down so you saw the red part. For no reason. I wore black and red shoes with white socks. I wore short shorts cause you, so you could see my undershorts underneath. I, I didn't go bald like Mike, but uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> but I'm getting there. <laughs> Yeah, man. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. I don't really have much to say. I said everything when I had to pause. You know, y'all, if you've been around this channel, you know how I feel about Mike. Like I said earlier, Mike's the GOAT, greatest player of all time. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of players who have arguments um, on why they should be the greatest player of all time. I can honestly say that. I think there's probably about 10, 11 players that do. But for me, uh, even acknowledging that, I just think Mike is by far and away the best. Um, to be honest, 
like it, it's just ev ev when you when you look at everything everything it's like this this guy is this guy was incredible um i wanted to add something back when i was talking about you know people look when people see michael jordan it's like black jesus or they seen an angel or they seen a ghost you know takes the air out of the room but then they also mentioned something about um what did they what did they say about the younger generation and um you know they've seen michael but they haven't really seen michael they saw a few clips here and there so they don't really understand and a story i'll tell you this story michael jordan is somewhere outside of the arena the charlotte hornets arena and you know it's like three kids or something like that some kids looking into a garage on their bicycles or skateboards or something like that and they know that the players usually come out of this tunnel or come out of this door so they were waiting around for lamello ball uh so mike michael jeffrey jordan pops out pops out and these kids looking at michael jordan basically say where's lamello at <laughs> I said, you know what? <laughs> Imagine seeing Michael Jordan and being discouraged and saying, where's LaMelo Ball at? <sighs> you know that South Park episode? How do I reach these kids? Let me know what you think about it. Check out our Michael Jordan playlist. Like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you. Hit the bell, stay notified, and I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.